Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Sandler. How was yesterday? Good? Great? Let's make today even better. It's the last day. We're going to have a good chat. How many of you have been thinking about AI and sales? How many of you are not thinking about AI and sales? OK, we, I see some. All right, all right. Well, at least we should think about it. So you saw the video? Quick question. How many of you thought that was me in that video? <laughs> OK, well, the one and a half dance moves that I know probably would have been sufficient. My wife says that. But that much creativity, that's not me. So no, it was not me in the video. Uh, you're just going to have me here for the next 25, 30 minutes. And uh, we'll talk about AI. My name is Amar Preet Kalkat. I'm the founder and CEO of Humantic AI. Uh, we are the first ever buyer intelligence platform. We are a way for sellers to truly meaningfully know their buyers at every stage of the funnel and run a personalized sales motion. But today I'm not going to be talking about Humantic AI. I'm only going to be talking about AI. So AI beyond, beyond Humantic. I have built AI products for around 20, 40 years. I started in college, got fascinated with AI. And since then, last 12 years as an entrepreneur, this is my second startup, both in the AI space. The first one uh, was in the consumer intelligence space, uh, became one of the top five sales uh, consumer intelligence tools generated by Foresto, uh, Humantic AI, Wall Street Journal a couple of years ago, call it tech that could reshape the world. Now it's on us to actually make that happen. So hopefully I'll be able to share a thing or two you know, about AI and how you should probably be thinking about AI. It's on your minds, of course, as you said. So sales and AI. Sales, everything changes over time, right? Things generally change gradually. That's how it happens. But once in a while, that gradual becomes sudden. That's, that's the very nature of how trends go. Sales at this point is at that moment. What COVID has done, it's accelerated the shift to digital. Any data point that you pick up, Gartner says 80% of interactions are going digital in the next two years. Automation's everywhere. A lot of tools, you know, we build tools. A lot of tools are about automating things. Do more. That's just created noise for people. Everything just, you could send one email, now you could send 100 emails in one go. It's noise. No, no, one, no one is happy about that. Now, we have AI on the horizon. How should we be thinking about AI? Is AI a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Is it an opportunity? Is it a calamity? What is AI? Or is it both? Let me, let me pause and ask a question. Who here thinks AI is an opportunity? Beautiful, beautiful. And who here thinks it's a calamity? Beautiful again. It's both. It is both. It's not just an opportunity. So let's, let's not be all warm and fuzzy about AI. I want you to be, I mean, we sell AI, but I also want you, know, you to be cognizant that this is something that you have to take seriously and responsibly because it impacts your lives, our lives, the lives of our employees, customers, everyone. So to understand the role of AI, what it's going to do over the next few years, let's look back. Technology in general. What has technology done? It's accelerated change like nothing else. Companies, from the, I have a couple of data points here, Fortune 500 companies from the last 50 years, only 52 of them are around. 
450, poof, gone, gone. In the next 20 years, this is going to accelerate. The 500 that we see on the top, I don't know, maybe 20 of them will be around. It feels too, it feels like it's, no, that's, that's not how it's going to play out. But the fact is, it is. I, I was speaking to some of my friends, and people were like, how could Google and Amazon, how could they ever get dislodged? Well, what happened with GPT, chat GPT? For the first time, people have seen a glimpse that Google could just go away. People are not going to need search anymore. They'll just go and ask chat GPT. And suddenly, our mind starts opening up. That, that is how catastrophic it can be. But we'll talk about the opportunity as well on the other side. So you see over here, it's been one of the biggest productivity enhancements that has happened in the last 20, 30 years. You see here from 1990 when internet started to 2010, 20 years, productivity almost went up by four times. It used to take eight people to do a million dollars in revenue. This is S&P companies that you see here. Now, 2010, it was two and a half people to do a million dollars in revenue. The last 10 years, the change has been very small. Two and a half became two. You're barely keeping up with the rate of inflation, so not really a change. Now, AI is coming in. There's a very recent study, generative AI, GPT, we're all hearing about it. Very recent study came out literally a week ago. It's, it's not even peer-reviewed, but MIT study, and I think it's indicative. They studied the impact of generative AI yeah, on productivity. What does the data say? People, they had two groups, control group, test group. People who used uh, AI, their productivity improved by almost 40%. 30 days became 17 days for the same task. What it was 30 hours became 17 hours you know, for the same task. Quality improved by 20% at the same time for the group using generative AI. And these were people who did not, had never used generative AI earlier. The other group, their productivity came down from 30 days to 28 days. You know, so slight improvement, but the quality also went down by around 10%. So that is the impact that AI, generative AI, and I think it's representative of all AI, it's having today. The second part of their study was they actually saw that it was reducing inequality. People who had more skills, less skills, they were actually closer together, those cohorts. So that's, those are the two sides of AI, you know, jobs, et cetera, we've been hearing, so we'll, we'll chat about that in a second. So it's both. So that's, that's the first thing I'll, I'll like all of us to keep in mind. It is both at the same time. We have to prepare with that in mind. So is AI going to be like technology has been? Yes, but bigger. 5x, 10x bigger. I'll talk about some of the results, et cetera, that we've seen. So in a way, it's like, you know, if you're at the start of the summer, you're your kid was five feet, and then at the end of the summer, they'll be five, six, right? You, that's, that's where AI is, you know? So it's a step change that is, that is at play here. It's going to be bigger than what we have seen earlier, and I think most of us have seen technology coming into play in the last 20, 30 years, at, at least at some level. Now, some of you, naturally, are going to be Dismissive. It's bound to happen. So, we, you know, everyone here, by and large, is familiar with the DISC personality framework. So it's, it'll be probably the C types, right, or the C in your personality coming in. Now, we've seen this dance before. It's going to be all right. It's not going to be all right. It's going to be different. Yeah. So at 17 years ago, Newsweek said, hey, What's this, you know, publishing online and whatnot, et cetera, et cetera, you know, this is not going to happen. And then one fine day, they went purely online. Newsweek doesn't publish a physical magazine anymore. 
It's been some years. So that's the kind of change that is at play. So is AI only relevant to sales? Obviously not. But where is it most relevant? I think for the people in this room, that's where it presents the biggest opportunity of anything. So this is research from Salesforce. Uh, the number one thing, the number one area function where enterprises are thinking about AI is sales. So that's, that's the opportunity. It's growing massively at this point of time. It's the fastest growing side of technology for enterprises today. Yeah. And that brings a lot of possibilities for all of us in this room. So yesterday, uh, if you were in the room when uh, Dave spoke uh, in the morning, so he spoke about technology and methodology. Now, we are technology. I am technology. You, your methodology. AI tools by themselves, they do nothing. They will do nothing. Even AI will do nothing. People have to learn how to use them effectively. So that, that is an opportunity for especially this group over here, how to teach people to use AI effectively. But to do that, there's something that comes first. I'll tell you a small story. I'm from India. We have a small story my grandmother used to tell me when I was a kid. So there was a small boy. He used to eat a lot of sugar. Yeah? And his mother took him to the wise man in the village and said, this boy, he just eats too much sugar. Tell him to stop eating sugar. He doesn't listen to me. Everyone listens to you. So the old man says, come back in a month. She's like, OK. That's not very hard to say. Just tell him not to eat sugar. He'll listen to you. He says, come back in a month. So she goes back, takes the kid back in a month. And the old man says, hey, kid, stop eating sugar. And the mother's like, why couldn't you have said it a month ago? He's been eating sugar. The old man says, I used to eat sugar myself at that point of time. How can I tell him to stop eating sugar? So how can you tell your clients to use AI if you don't use AI yourself? That's the first step. So it starts by adopting AI yourself, becoming good at it, proficient at it, knowing it, seeing the good and the bad. It's not going to be all good. It's all not going to be always accurate and right. But that's where it starts, by adopting it, by becoming, in some ways, one with, with AI. So, and then you can do the same with your clients. Tell them, advise them, guide them. Technology and methodology, both come together, becomes a much bigger opportunity than a calamity it will, which it will. Jobs, number one, number one aspect of AI's adverse impact, it's going to happen. I'll not say it's not going to happen, okay? Some people say it's not going to happen. It's going to happen, yes. But, but, here's some data. Companies that have adopted AI, their rate of hiring, job creation, has been almost double of companies that have not adopted AI. So whose jobs does AI take away then? Those who adopt AI or those who don't adopt AI? It's a very simple answer. All the data, it ties into exactly this same trend line because companies that use technology more effectively fundamentally do much, much better. Same applies here. Now, I'll add a little bit. Is it going to take away jobs? Is it going to replace jobs? I would say it's going to change jobs. Technology's been taking away jobs for 500 years now. It's been happening. We're still around. We still have jobs. We still can fully employ it. If anything, uh, 
everyone has been much, much better off over years, right? I was talking to someone yesterday. I was talking about India has been pulling 36 million people out of poverty every year. A lot of it is led by technology. So technology, I, so I have this thought in my head. I call technology the angel of God. I believe in technology. You know, everyone doesn't have to, but I believe. It is, to me, the biggest level that can take us in a positive direction when used correctly. So that's most very important. Again, we're chatting about the Humantic product. If you've not seen, check it out. And uh, Tim, I was speaking to Tim from Octus AI, I think they spoke yesterday. He's like, I saw my profile, it creeped me out. And I was like, look, it's like nuclear energy. You can make a bomb or you can make electricity. That's technology. So how you use it, how we use it, that is the most important thing. So now I've spoken about AI, how to think about it, uh, what it is, what it is not. You know, briefly, we have limited time. I want to keep a few minutes for questions. I'm sure there'll be things to discuss. Now, let me spend a few minutes on what to do. Like I said, I obviously don't know everything, far from it, but I've spent a lot of time, I've thought a lot about it, uh, built quite a bit, sold quite a bit. So hopefully, hopefully there'll be some good things that, that you can take away. So how to think about it, right? How to easily assimilate it in your thought process so that you can adopt it easily or discard it easily, it's, it's your choice. I think this is a good starting point. You can fundamentally see AI, in, in, put it in two different buckets. One is replaceive AI. This is the AI that replaces. It's going to come, like I said. We have to prepare. It's not going to completely replace. It's going to change. Right? That's, that's job. Some jobs will go away. Some people will be impacted. Many new jobs will be created. Overall, we'll be better off. But it's going to be a change. And for some people, it will seem like a calamity. Odds are those are the people who will not be opening up to AI. Similar thing has happened with technology earlier. But the second part of AI is assistive AI, where AI essentially makes us better, more effective, more productive. I believe that that is a better starting point. So starting with assistive AI. So when you are thinking about AI for your organization, for your client, advising someone, uh, you know, again, yesterday Dave spent a lot of time about being a trusted advisor, and I'm sure that's what many of you do. I, I've, I spoke to some people outside, and that's what I kept hearing. Uh, again and again. So that's a good starting point. It's an easy starting point. Make your people more productive. Make them more effective. It's easy enough to see those AI technologies you know, from the other ones. Replacing ones will come. They'll come. We have to be ready. And we have to get our people ready. So, but let that be the second step. It makes the change much more easier to manage. Now. More specifically, where can you start? Again, this is some data. I largely agree with it. I think you know, with some changes here and there. So these are some good starting points. So when you talk about sales, I spoke about Humantic a little bit. You know, we say buyer intelligence, know your buyer. So we often say when I'm in meetings, I say, today, salespeople, they are living in a house with walls on three sides and nothing but emptiness on the fourth side. The way technology is shaped up, we have the likes of Zoom Info, a lot of data about the companies. You, know, you, you can easily get that data. So I'm talking about data and intelligence. We have the likes of Kong, conversational intelligence. A lot of it is about knowing your rep better. And then we have companies like, for example, Clary. Uh, this is Deal Pipeline Intelligence. Yesterday we had Guys from Octus IQ speaking about it, you know, they have a fantastic product. But the fourth pillar where sellers haven't really had anything significant is buyers. What do you know about your buyers? Ask anyone, the answer is LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a starting point. It's what does it do for you if you know where someone went to school or college? Maybe you got lucky. Maybe you, you know, it was in the same area, you lived close by, maybe it gives you a common point, but how does it help you connect and establish trust? So that's where we come from. But again, putting that aside, I'm you know, focusing on the larger role. 
predicting pipeline, predicting opportunities, assisting reps, letting them know where they're missing steps, where they need to do something, generating summaries of the meetings, action items. There's a lot of assistance. So you don't have to spend 30 minutes writing an email post a meeting. You use AI today, it'll give you a summary and action items, and in five minutes you can send that mail out. So that's, these are some of the areas where AI will more easily come in and be more helpful. Now, at a bigger picture level, how to think about it? This is, this is very simple. This is nothing to do with sales. You could be going to war, and I would probably have the same slide. Yeah. But basics, these are important basics. First of all, align your leadership. Now, this applies to a larger company, but this also applies to a smaller organization. Align everyone. There are going to be skeptics. It's, it's bound to happen. Second thing, probably the most important thing, the first-line managers are always, always critical. The generals can sit out there and strategize, but if you know, the leaders, you know, the majors and the colonels and the, uh, you know, what you have you, they are not executing perfectly, it's not going to happen. And then execute you, educate your users, sorry. Educate them, because they'll have a lot of questions. They probably, a lot of people are scared right now. What's going to happen to my job? So, and the last point, don't expect it to just work out quickly. It's not going to. It will. Well, let me put it like this. It will. You'll see some results, but not everything. Don't give up too soon. Okay? It's, this is coming. It's bound to come. But don't stop too soon. I've, again, met some people. They said, we tried this. Didn't really work. And then we said, okay, well, you know. Well, we see people coming to our product and trying it out. And I've seen people literally uh, come try one profile, and in 13 minutes, 13 minutes, Seven minutes, they stop trying. Give it some time. This is new. New things take time. You have to get your, wrap your head around it. It takes time, so please give it some time. What do you get out of it? Here are some examples. SAP says they attribute two billion, with a B, dollars in revenue to one of their AI programs. Honeywell talks about implementing one conversational AI tool and attributes of 150 million. We see that firsthand at Humantic AI. I'll, we see that firsthand. It's not uncommon for us to see pipeline impact of more than 200% when you start running a personalized sales motion. And I've been in conversations where the customer comes and says, no, this is not possible. This is too good to be true. We literally had a conversation where they said, no, the instrumentation's wrong. Something's wrong. We need to rerun this trial. I'm not kidding. And I said, hold on. For you, it might be new. For us, it's not. We've seen it play out across a dozen clients. Yeah. So this is not. So I spoke about the step impact. That's what it does. It is, it is a big change, huge change. Talking yesterday, I expect even pricing models to start changing. Now, that's besides the point today. But that's, that's how massive, massive this can be. Because it is that kind of a change. It will sound too good to be true. Sometimes it will underwhelm. It will say, oh, this is not great. And sometimes it will be like, whoa, this is, how is this even possible? It's not possible. It is. So how to think about it? You know, next step. Again, two, three things. And these are tactical points, right? I've spoken about the high level. These are tactical points. Hopefully, uh, you know, they help everyone think better about leveraging using AI. So. Again, whether you're a big org or a small org, I think uh, the points necessarily you know, hold. So budgeting, if you just keep it as a tool's budget, odds are you still have hygiene level things to take care of. We see that often. Our CRM is still not working great. 20 years in, uh, it happens. If you club it up, you will never get your priorities right. So, so I, I trained in martial arts for around five, five-ish years. So one of the things that we learned is you never, you never just go one, two, right? You go one and two. So what that means is that you got to do more than one thing at the same time. One is not enough, yeah. So yes, there are basic things that need to be fixed. You need to keep doing that. But you also got to do some of the advanced things. Expertise, that's a matter of building it up. Now, ROI I spoke about already. 
yeah, expect ROI, it will be there. Good AI tools, not all of them are good anyway, so, but good AI tools will show you results pretty quickly, but not full results. They'll likely multiply over the years. And the last point is, is focus, yeah. So be focused, yeah, think about AI separately than tech. Now it's harder said that said than done, let me tell you that. Because you'll say, oh, tools are tools, technology is technology. I'm saying, please separate them out. So it's a bit like, um, you know, again, you're a pair and I'm a pair, I've got a nine-year-old daughter. So we'll say, hey, just eat your veggies. And you know, the kiddo eats baby carrots and you're like happy, yeah, 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 the kiddo eat veggies. But now you ask a dietitian, the baby carrots and the broccoli, they're not the same. They're very different. Baby carrots, full of sugar. Now it's good for a kid, you know, they're good things too. But if you apply the same thing to yourself, your diet, no. Baby carrots are not good for you. Broccoli is, green stuff is. So keep that in mind. This is a little bit of the green stuff and you know, carrots uh, over here. These are some of the common roadblocks. Yeah. Data, giving up too soon. I've got too many tools, we hear that often. And I keep telling people, no, 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 you don't have too many tools. Why, I do. Now look around you, look at your house. You used to have one or two computers around you. Now you've got 20, 25. Your car's a computer. Your kitchen's got five computers. Your living room's got five computers. You know, the Alexa, the speakers, everything. That's just the nature. That's, that's the next steps. We are going to be becoming more technical, technological. So this is not too many tools. It's too many tools. It feels like because we were not there. So keep that in mind. You have to, you have to synchronize what you adopt. That's important. But no, it's, it's not too many tools. And of course, the biggest um, culprit is always status quo, right? We just, it's okay, things are okay. They're okay today, they'll not be okay tomorrow. And final one, um, because, you know, everyone here, uh, largely, I think uh, we have a lot of franchises, but we have some, you know, clients as well. But from a franchisee perspective, uh, something I referred to earlier, now, what's a good way to think about it? So as I said, your clients are probably looking at you, you Sandler. They expect you to be the experts, know everything, not just how to sell, but also sell using what tools and technologies. So yes, they have been speaking about HubSpot, and what I said earlier, HubSpot is not AI. That's a different kind of a tool. If you put it in the same bracket, hey, are you doing HubSpot? That's great. It's not, right? I don't want to make it sound like, no, it's great. So, this is again from a you know a survey that was done by ZS Associates. They're one of the largest sales consulting firms. You probably know them. So, what matters to clients? Yes, of course. The number one thing is how effective you are. Of course, the Sandler method is a Sandler method. So that's beautiful. Yeah. Number two is change. Change is big on every leader's mind today. How, how can we make sure that we can manage change you know better? But the number three is expertise with AI, and it'll keep coming up more and more. So your clients, when you meet them, they will expect you to be your, you know, their guides when it comes to AI. So with that, I'll wrap up. Hopefully a little bit of a primer and uh, you know, gives, uh, leads to some thoughts about uh, being more effective with AI over the years. Uh, this is my LinkedIn, so you can scan this one, connect with me. I, obviously, this is something I feel passionately about. We talk about it a lot. And thank you, everyone, uh, for your time today. We have a minute. I'll take one or two questions. Thank you. There you go. Big round of applause for Amarpreet. Thank you very much. That was awesome stuff. And we do have some time for questions here. So we got a 15-minute break. You can hang out. We can talk and uh, do questions. You can take a break if you need one. We're going to come back with a panel about the uh, impact of women in leadership in sales and hear from some awesome clients and uh, thought leaders in the women in sales space. But any questions for Amarpreet? I'll run this uh, microphone around. Anybody got a good one based on what you heard or something you've been worried about with uh, ChatGPT? Anything? Other AI? Well, looks like I answered all the questions or uh, none of the questions. So I'll start with one. How about this? Uh, I'm actually, you guys are going to get a sneak peek. I'm talking this afternoon. But they have made a robot out of metal and magnets that will melt, go through grates, and then reform on the other side like Terminator 2. ChatGBT can write its own code. Uh, Zuckerberg's trying to make the matrix. 
when we really look out there, calamity or opportunity? Like I said, uh, it is both. It is both. Serious calamity, we are far, far away. It sometimes looks like that. Yeah, it just looks like that you know, from the outside, but a good look will tell you we're far, far away. So those of us who understand LLMs and how GPT works, it is a lot of sort of dumb things coming together. But I believe that AI can, can, not will, go sentient. It's possible. It's, it works a lot like human mind, for example. So yeah, uh, probably far away, but definitely something to keep in mind. Uh, not, not too close, though. All right. Anybody else have a question? I'll reverse it then, and I guess uh, Humantech is a, an obvious and easy answer, so I'll steal that one from you. But if everybody in this room is going to take one step on Monday to like explore, do the next thing, or one tool to recommend their, their people use um, starting immediately, what's the first step in that journey? So what's the first tool or? Yeah, or trick or hack or anything. Like, What's one thing their team should be doing on Monday when they, they're prepping for a deal? Or well, something? let's say try Humantic AI. Try Humantic AI. Free trial. I said that's a free <laughs> answer. All right, give them a big round of applause. Thanks. All right. Thank you, everyone.